Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another session. So we were discussing on classification of canines. We have done with unsupervised learning. Then we will discuss on the decision tree classifications. We will start with the what is the agenda for two days? So we will learning about decision tree, how to build a decision tree, uh, what are the greedy algorithms. Then we'll build a best decision tree in the graph. What are the attribute selections? And some use cases also. So first of all, what is a decision tree? So So what is a decision tree? So a uh, decision tree is a non-parametric supervised uh, learning algorithm, so which is utilized for the both classifications and irrigation tasks. So it has a hierarchical and uh, tree structure, so which consists of a root node and branches and internal nodes. as well as leaf nodes also. So decision tree learning employees is a divide and conquer strategy. So by conducting a greedy search to identify the optimal split points within a tree, this process of splitting is then repeated at the top down. So I will make a small diagram of this. <laughs> so whether all whether or not all the data points are classified here as a homogeneous sets is a large dependent on the complexity of decision tree. So smaller trees are more easy and able to attain pure leaf nodes. So the data points in a single class, however, as a tree grow in size. 
so it becomes easy easily and difficult to maintain the purity so within the subtrace here So here you can see it is a decision tree and a non-terminal node and the terminal nodes are different. So the non-terminal nodes are used to make a local decision based on the local information. So here terminal nodes make the final decisions, the decision tree. You can see the diagram here. Here we have a root node and decision tree. Then the bottom we have leaf nodes, which are in the green color. The ocean graph analytics. So the ocean process span a vast range of scales and both the temporal and spiritual from the subsecond and some millennial scales of the molecular process and the climate change of spanning decades and the ocean basin to investigate the wide range of the process and a large volume of the data has to be gathered from the harsh environmental in the chemical oceanography that measures the task and exacerbated by the low concentrations. So the presence of <coughs> excuse me, relativity and high concentration of the sound and the chemical chemical similarities. Fully melt by taking water samples for the analysis and either on the board of research vessels. So scientific questions this method inactive is that it does not provide any necessary data for understanding the underlying processes. Many parameters are interested very widely in time and space and cannot be categorized by infrequently fixed interval samples. The episodic and the transit events 
often are completely missed because no sampling is taking place. So at this time of their occurrence, uh, one minute. Here, how a decision tree is useful. In the oceanography analytics, so um, machine learning is a discipline of computer science. Add that and develop dynamic algorithms of capable of producing data-driven decisions. So ML has proven itself to be answer to many real-world problems within the capabilities capabilities of real-world problems. So here ML has advantages over the traditional methods because it is able to build models which is highly dimensional and non-linear data. So with complex relations and missing values, ML has proven useful for very large number of applications in many parts of the earth systems. For example, land, oceans, and atmosphere. Then we have how to build decision tree. First, we have to use the training data to build a model. Then we have a tree generation determines so which variables to split at a node and what will be the value of the split. And the Here we have an internal node and leaf of the terminal node. So it assigns terminal nodes to the label. So the study was based on this synthesis of secondary information and to collect the data. So an intensive lecture review related to the machine learning applications and scope of machine learning in the oceanography was done.
so the contact were connected through the online and offline modes so in addition to revealing revealing documents and the reports were also connected from the web sites and published research articles personal contract mm -hmm. So you see the open source software, Python and R, as well as commercial software sort of illustration. So these were used for the data analysis and visualization tools. So here, So the ocean and so the ocean is a vast and dynamic and complex. So the data structure of the ocean becomes increasing, complex and large. So generally, uh, coastal zones are vulnerable to the natural deserters like sea levels to rise and coastal flooding, erosions, etc. The coastal zones management and flood erosion control, the reliable and accurate tools were predicted, and forecastings of the coastal evolutions and reductions was water is needed in order to minimize coast production uh, protections and conversations. For this reason, traditional data analysis methods are time consuming and costly. So even some cases, analysis is not possible in conventional way. So here, ML techniques are robust, fast, and highly accurate. So here, <laughs> so here, common machine learning in the applications of oceanography. So here the oceanography and climate predictions and forecasting. So this will be discussing. We will be discussing on these things.
So in the ocean climate prediction and forecasting. So ad advancements in ML in the combination with optimization methods. So are promising to balance the performance of the forecast and the earliness of those forecasts. The most common ML methods used in meteorological forecast and genetic algorithm, so which has been used to model rainy versus non-rainy days and machine learning methods have been applied for forecast coastal sea levels. The identification of a small and large marine tax are required specialization knowledge. So, which is one of the bottleneck in the oceanography studies. And the limitations can be solved by ML machine learning ap approach with a high accuracy and automation identification techniques. So, recently, advances in the machine learning are promising with a regret to improve accuracy of automated. So here, ML can use in the direction of ocean pollution. With the help of the satellites and the radar images, such as oil spill, plastic pollution. So, oil spill injection currently requires a high training human and operate to assign each region of the image. Here, MLP NN, NN modes to detect oil spill on the ocean surface from the systematic appearance radar. So, a multi layer perceptron neural networks models was developed to determine the concentrations of the pigment suspense and Weber stock. Then we have a greedy algorithm.
so the problem we are choosing local optimums also lead to global solutions are the best fit for greedy so the local optimal strategy is to choose the item so that has a maximum value versus weight and ratio and this is the strategy also and leads to global optimal solutions because we are allowed to take fractions of the an item so if an optimal solutions to the problem can be found by choosing the best choice at each step without reconsidering the previous steps and once chosen the problem can solve using a greedy approach so the property is called as a greedy choice property so in the optimal substructures for the greedy algorithm so if the optimal overall solutions to be problem and corresponding to the optimal solutions to its sub problems then the problem can solved using a greedy approach so this property is called as optimal structures substructures here we have some advantages so the algorithm is e easier to describe so this algorithms can perform better than other algorithms but not in all the cases there are some of a drawback in the greedy algorithm so as i mentioned earlier the greedy algorithm doesn't allow procedure the optimal solutions so this is the major disadvantage of the algorithm for example <laughs> suppose we want to find the longest part of the graph below from the root to the leaf so let us use the greedy algorithm here
to begin with the solution sets is empty there are some are points so each step an item is added to the solutions sets units and solutions to reach okay. so if the solution is set is fixable then the current item is kept Else the item is rejected and never consider again. So let's now use this algorithm to solve a problem. So, reconstructed is a top down recursive divine and concur manager. Concur man, sorry. So, it starts on the training. Hmm. Sorry. So the attributes are categorized. So it will be, they are discreted in advance. So if it continues value, value, then they are discreted in advance. So the here input data is recursively based on selection of the attributes. So the test attributes at the each node are selected at the basics of her of a heuristic and statistical measures. So here some of conditions for stopping the paternity. All same all samples were given in the node belongs to the same class. So there are no remaining contributes for the further majority voting is employed for the classification of the leaves. So there will be no sam samples left, samples left in the conditions. So here we have in the decision tree we have regularizations nothing but regularizations and parameters is running
So we are preparing is nothing but will be all fast. Then we have three structures. In that we have root node and internal nodes, branches. You can assume a tree for that, all the branches, roots. Then we have leaf nodes, same like that. Then we have Then we have greedy algorithm as we discussed here. Just before we have discussed on the greedy algorithm. Then an entropy is formed for the impurities of an error. Then we have we will discuss on the information grain and the entropy before an entropy after. So we'll discuss on the entropy and information gain. So we want to use the attributes that does not bend job. So the splitting of the training data sets, this could be a measure by using entropies and the information gain. So in the entropies, we have some points. So the measure of the disorder, disorder of the impurities, then we have to find the entropy of the output values and the set of the training instance. Then if the output well, the split uh, and in 50 50. So then you can see the set is impure. Then the entropy will be one. So the output. If the output is zero, set is pure and the entropy will be zero. Then if the output speaks into 25 75 percentage, then the set is 
impure entropy will be 0 0.811 so we can do all the calculations on the entropy So the information gain, the information is gain based on the decreasing in the entropy after a data set is split. On an attribute, then we are constructing a decision tree it is about finding the attributes so that return in high information gain, so which is most of their homogeneous branches. In the information gain attribute selections, here we have some formulas through which we can find out the values. First, we have expected information entropy. So, needed to classify the tuple in D. Then we have information needed. After using a split D into the V partitions to classify the D. Then we have information gained by branching on the attributes. These are the three diagrams. So in the oceanography uh, analytics, Ocean wave modeling and predictions are important for the mar maritime country because there are the numerous reasons behind this. 
For example, a shipping route can be optimized by avoiding rough sea, thereby reducing time spent during transportations and accurate forecast of the ocean wave heights and directions are very valuable resources. So they are for many marine based on the industries. We have applied machine learning techniques to predict the wave conditions. So intensive physics based incentive physics based model by straightforward multiplications of an input. So vector by mapping matrices resulting from the trained machine learning model. Used as a multilinear perception MLP and NN models to retrieve the wind speed globally about a 30 mm resolution for the ACR data sets. For the ocean current predictions, generally ROMC, sorry, ROMS is widely used for the ocean dynamic process analysis. So it is possible to improve the predictions of the ocean current using data driven machine learning methods. For example, a neural networks has been used to build Reynold average and turbulent models. And <clears throat> so 
then we have wind and wave modeling So in the wave, wind and wave modeling, ocean wave modeling and predictions are important for the metric country. As I mentioned before, so the ML model, so ML model have ability to capture the complex nonlinear regressions ships relationships in the input data so which are the crucial buildings blocks for the implementation of ecosystem so based on the fisheries management taking right taking the right inference about the marine conservations and managements can be very difficult as there is not sufficient data for certainty and the consequences. So the ML methods can be provided a tool for increasing certain and improve results, especially techniques, so that incorporate probabilities. So the machine learning and the more specifically Bayesian networks are used, being used for the marine spatial planning in the cooperation of GIS in the oceans. So here we have some points to discuss. So here are some steps to be taken to improve the ML models in the oceanography. So they are, I uh, will explain one by one. First, we have constant engagement. So we have to we have constant engagement of oceanography. 
so which expertise in the machine learning then we have second one preservation and sharing acquired knowledge so preservation and sharing acquired knowledge of ml among the community then we th we have heard one collection of collection of the ocean data should be available for machine learning model and experiments such as in the some communities kagil and gitops so we have communication between oceanographers and machine learning scientists so is needed for awareness and potential of applications so machine learning scientists could cooperate ocean scientists for data collections and equipment designs then we have motivation and encourage for the long term machine learning research in the oceanography applications then some events in the schools colleges and universities so the competition of machine learning in oceanography can be effectively increases so these are some few points for the improvement ml in the ocean graph so let us see the code to the decision tree so here we have imported the pandas and numpy let me restart the panel
let me execute all these things. We have executed the pandas numpies. Then we have loaded the data set. Here we have we can see the data set. Then we have data is null. You can see here, not errors. Then give me a minute. Then data is dropped. Then we have done the data pre-processing. Here is the list. We have string. Then we do training and test. Here you can see the test change a little bit.
then you have done prediction test on the data sets for hyperparameters. Then we have done for entropy. Then we have imported the accuracy score for confusion matrix. We have done then a uh, search for the CV from the random search. So the string is default. Then we have a random research on the model. Here you can see the prediction for S unknown is mentioned. You can see the randomized search CV. And here we have mean of 0 0.68 and here we have 0 
here we have some advantages and disadvantages of the decision tree in the oceanography analytics. So compared to the other algorithm, decision tree required less effort for the data preparation and during the pre-processing techniques. <laughs> and a decision tree does not record the scaling of the data as well. So a decision tree model is very innovative and easy to explain the technical terms as well as a scaled folder. And decision tree does not record scaling as well as data. And decision tree does not require any normalization of the data also. Here we have some disadvantages. So the disadvantages for the decision tree in the oceanography analytics. So a small change in the data can you can cause a large change in the structure of the decision tree algorithm. For a decision to some of the calculations can go far more complex. So when we compare to other other algorithms. So here in the decision tree, often it involves uh, a high time for the train the model. So here, uh, decision tree training is relatively expen too expensive. So as the complexity and the time has taken as more. So here the uh, algorithms are inactive, inactive for the applying regressions. 
and predictions continuous values in the decision tree. So these are the advantages and disadvantages. So the work investigation various machine learning Techniques for the oceanography. So here the data analysis and the further opportunities ML offer is a diverse number of the methods so that are accessible to the research and fitted in the oceanography applications. So which is heavy based on the data. So this approaches offer significant advantages in the real life operations applications. So they have a great potential to improve the quality of oceanography research and approaches by creating more accurate models. So here ML might be a use in the large oceanography data sets to discover hidden parts, terms and trends. So the success of the ML approaches strongly and depend on the adequacy of the data sets by using for the training. So the data availability prescriptions quality and represent techniques and among the crucial element for the success in the type of the ML applications. So here ML also requires inter disciplinary collab collaborations, communications, techniques, knowledge on the program, pro programming and financial supports.
मल्टीलेयर प्रिसेप्शन ए मल्टीलेयर प्रिसेप्शन neural networks models was developed to derive the concentrations and ml can be used to detection of ocean pollution with the help of the satellite and radar images ml algorithm are trained on images videos and sounds other type of data label ml forecasting techniques were used to predict suspended segmentation concentration So the main applica main applications of machine learning is in oceanography prediction of oceans weather climate habiting modeling and distribution species identification coastal water monitoring marine resources in the water and detections of the oil spill and pollutions of the way of modeling So ML has transferred a data rich field such as commercial sectors and has relative latent entry in the scientific discipline. So data especially is one of the ocean related field, high resources incentive to the collection and therefore costly often difficult to measure and hence of scale compared to commercial field. Moreover, the physical variables often exhibited complex non stationary patterns. So a large training data set is then required for the learning process. Another limitation of the application of the ML approach for the physical science is a black box nature. So ML has applied <laughs> to a variety of problems in the marine science. Discovery of climate patterns and modeling forecasting sea levels in the oceans. So the Technic Committee of Data Analytics, Integration and Modeling Planning 
to various oceans re related problems ml approach are generally divided into two categories as you know supervision and supervise so a proper trained ml algorithm can be used to predict the outcome using a new inputs So care must be taken to use the unbiased and renewable training data in order to avoid introductions bias to the learning uh, due to some supervisions and learning reg is regressions. To find the pattern and structures within the data. Techniques such as clustering and dimensional reductions are used in the recent ML advisor networks. So we have we have discussed on this agenda decision tree, how to build decision tree, greedy algorithms. Yeah, this really algorithms. So we will be covering another part for the next day.